Why is anime obsessed with German culture? Let's take a look. Willkommen. My name is Sean Huggins and this is React with Hugs. I want to see how he reacts when he thinks no one's watching. I can't help it if he's weird. He's American. He's going crazy with that work. Everybody reacts differently. I think he's weird, but that's me. He's American, you know. Welcome to React with Hugs. Let's hop straight into today's comment of the day. So today's comment of the day comes from Jack Chaos, and they say, It's versed, not versed. Why do English speakers struggle to pronounce umlauts and then pronounce them perfectly in the weirdest places? Uh, Jack Chaos, thank you for the comment. And to answer your question, this may come as a surprise to you, but we native English speakers don't actually have umlauts in our native language. Um, so not only are they difficult for us to pronounce because we aren't used to saying that kind of letter. E, e. We, we don't have that sound in our language. But also when learning a new language, sometimes you just kind of make mistakes, believe it or not. Much like uh, you misspelled chaos in your own name, Jack Chaos. So... Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> Anyways, let's hop into today's reaction. <laughs> All right, so today we are taking a look at why is anime so obsessed with German culture? I have no idea. I do watch some anime, but not enough to really notice an obsession with German culture within the anime scene. So I would say I dabble. I dabble in anime, but I'm not a hardcore power user, so let's find out why the heck is anime so obsessed with German culture? Los Gates. Why is anime so obsessed with Deutschland? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not the only person to notice this. From Jojo, to Evangelion, to Girls and Panzer, to Attack on Titan, to Saga of Tanya the Evil, and many, many more. Okay, all the ones the that I did not watch, that explains it. invading <laughs> countries and instead have set their sights on Japanese cartoons. But the question you are probably thinking what is why? What the frick? Why has German culture influenced anime okay. on such a widespread scale? While I don't believe there is a definitive answer to this question, I have a particular okay, not a good theory start. <laughs> on why German culture influenced Japan, and that had a later knock-on effect on the manga and anime industry. As you can probably tell, I am okay. neither Japanese nor German. So, what gives me the right <laughs> to the British what? to appropriate these two cultures for <laughs> some dumb historical theory? Well, you gotta remember, taking things from other countries is what the British do best. So, I'm the best man for the job. Please note Perfect. that this is just a theory on the origins of German cultural influence in Japan. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Which in turn affected our beloved Taiwanese moving pictures. I have no proof that this directly affected anime okay. in particular. However, it did plant the seeds of German influence in Japan, which then later blossomed into the anime we know today. All Let's right. begin. If Let's you begin. are thinking that this theory will be that because Japan was allies with Germany during World War II, it then sparks Japanese interest in German culture, then you are wrong. This video is not about World War II. That was my all. guess. During the Second World War, there was little opportunity for cultural influence to occur, as the Germans and Japanese tended to yeah, deal with I guess their they were a little busy affairs independently. during that time. Of course, there were still state meetings between the two nations during the war, but this had little impact on the Japanese communities living in Japan. Yeah, I'm sure they weren't discussing anime during those meetings, but in I could be wrong. Of German I wasn't there, them. believe it or not. Sure, the Second World War may have developed Japanese interest in Germany, but the origins can be found much earlier. Let's hmm. unravel the history of the first Japanese Germaboos. For 214 years, what? spanning from 1639 to 1853, Japan was under the Sokoku policy which was an isolationist Sudoku? foreign policy where Japan had largely cut ties with the outside world with few exceptions oh. and foreigners were forbidden to <laughs> enter Japan. Japan changed in 1853 with the expedition oh, no. of US Navy Commodore Matthew Perry. The modern ships of the US Navy made Japan realize they were outgunned and were forced to open up trade with the West. Uh -huh. Japan then adopted a policy of modernization during the Meiji period, learning from the West to be able to compete with the Western powers in the future. 
This was the beginning okay. of significant German influence in Japan. Oh, the new I see. Japanese constitution of 1889 took inspiration from the philosophy of Rudolf von Neist, a German politician and political scientist. And the a great mustache Japanese to boot. army was stylized by the Prussian army with Prussian general and foreign advisor Clemens Wilhelm Jacob Meckel spending Another three years improving Damn. the Japanese military. From these two examples, Bro, it's clear... The Germans had some great historical mustaches. What the frick? Some first-team Hall of Fame mustaches yeah, in German history. A large contribution to the modernization of Japan, with Japan developing its culture to be more Western and modernized. Okay. Now that I've got the backstory out of the way, let's fast forward to what I really want to talk about and Anime. the origin of German culture in the Japanese communities across Japan. Yeah. And that is the First World War. Oh. Wait, what? Japan fought in World War One? That's BS. They only fought in World War Two. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. Not many people know about this, really? but Japan did actually fight in the First World War. But there is a catch. They only fought in just one battle. And this battle oh. was the Siege of Tsingtao from August to November 1914. Tsingtao was a German colony in China since 1898. Oh, and wow. if you like to go on the piss like me with beer and other alcoholic beverages, Whoa, the name Tsingtao the should ring the bell. This? Disclaimer, I am not sponsored by Tsingtao beer. It tastes like ass. I Some mean, people are into that though. Good job, I'm an ass man. And yeah, it's pretty obvious. See? Who are the people who introduced beer to Tsingtao in China? The Germans, of course. Do I really have to spell it out to you? Anyway, this is definitely uh -huh. a good example of German settlers who lived in Tsingtao having an impact on their new community's culture so Germans in China. And you might beer. want to keep note of this as it's going to be relevant again later on. Anyway, to Japan. let us set the stage for the Siege of Tsingtao. Britain had just declared war on Germany in August 1914 and requested Japanese involvement in attacking Tsingtao. Japan accepted and the siege of Tsingtao begun, with the combined Japanese and British Empire force of about 23,000 men versus only about 2,000 Tsingtao Whoa. German soldiers and an additional 3,000 German volunteers, most of wow. whom weren't trained soldiers and were just civilians and had settled in Tsingtao and they just wanted to defend their colony from the Japanese and British who were invading. As you can probably tell, okay. this battle was never going to end well for the Germans. Of course. The Japanese were victorious due to their overwhelming numbers playing a large role, and the Germans suffering from the Anglo-Japanese naval blockade, starving the Germans mm. of supplies and support. Most and of the beer, Germans surrendered, probably. meaning Japan and Britain now had around 4,000 German POWs oh. they needed to deal with. The Japanese kindly I'm seeing offered it now. to transport I'm these the roots German being POWs planted. and imprison them in around 15 POW camps across Japan until the end of the war. After criticism of the conditions in the camps by inspectors from neutral organizations oh, such man. as the Red Cross, over half of the camps were closed, meaning only six camps remained. In Dude, prisoner of war camps after World War One must have been i don't even i don't even want to think about it that would have been pfft, crazy Japan. the camp i mainly want to talk about was bando camp located on shikoku island in naruto shikoku. city and before you weebs get excited no what? it's not the fucking hidden leaf village okay oh. the treatment of prisoners at bando camp was unusually lenient as mm. prisoners were often allowed outside the camp and even allowed to interact with the local Japanese what community. What the frick? How the frick are you a prisoner if you're allowed to leave? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh my god, what? And work in the local factories You're allowed to businesses. leave and you're a prisoner? What's going on here? For the majority of the local Japanese community, this was the first time that they had interacted with foreigners. Wow. The German prisoners introduced their native culture More to the great local mustaches. Japanese. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony was played in Japan for the first time by the prisoners. Oh. And the prisoners built a German bridge 
which is still there today. German bread. The Germans taught the local Japanese how to bake bread, make cheese, Ooh. perform gymnastics, and play <laughs> fuzzball, not soccer. You filthy Americans! <laughs> In March 1918, the prisoners hosted Ausstellung für die Bildkunst und Handfertigkeit. You don't want to know how many takes that took me to say that, because <laughs> I don't speak German. But yeah, if you're German and you thought that was a bad <laughs> pronunciation, let me know. But for those English speakers, it's the Visual Arts and Crafts Exhibition. This was an oh, exhibition of show. German food, sport handicraft and music at the camp a you might be thinking coachella what attention would a small exhibition of under a thousand germans actually contribute to japanese cultural exchange it's that a great question the not so chinese cartoons and mangoes that i read in the present well, Let's you see. know what? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> this festival attracted approximately oh, wow. 50,000 visitors over the course of days. Bro, it and is Coachella! Even Prince Naruhiko Higashikuni of the Imperial family showed interest in the exhibition and wanted to bring it to the rest of Naruto City. Prince <laughs> Naruhiko was the uncle in law of the future Emperor Hirohito and became uncle Prime Minister okay. of Japan okay. in 1945 interestingly enough. So while hmm. this was just one camp in Japan, these German prisoners had a much larger impact on Japanese interest in German culture overall. Yeah, seriously. It Dang. is even said that these German prisoners introduced the first ever sausages to Japan. Oh, we know We all like a bit of sausage, don't we? <laughs> but Bando was not the only camp to have this kind of okay. German cultural exhibition, as other camps in Japan started to follow a similar formula in oh. 1918 and 1919, such as the camp Ninoshima near Hiroshima, which attracted around 10,000 people. It Damn. became a nationwide cultural phenomenon. Prisoners started wow. to be shipped back to Germany at the end of 1919. However, approximately 170 German prisoners actually decided to remain in Japan rather than go back to Germany, which was suffering what? from the aftermath of defeat from the First World War, and it was really not a nice place they to live in at to that stay moment there? in time. What was truly significant about the German POWs in Japan was that it affected many local communities in Japan, and of they had course. been exposed to foreign cultural exchange for the first time for many of them. Yeah. The Dude, you got to imagine back in those days in 1915 to 1920 range, dude, you were never going to see somebody that wasn't from your town, <laughs> maybe like three towns over, but like that's mostly it and definitely not from a far away country. Like, it's just not happening for 99% of people. Like, having all these Germans show up with their cool mustaches must have been like, whoa, who the frick are these tall drinks of water walking all in here with their sausages and their beer? Prior German reforms to Japan in the 19th century that I talked about earlier was a perhaps contributing factor towards Japanese interest in Germany. But that was less of a cultural exchange and more of a political and military reformation which isn't okay. really cultural exchange in my eyes. The German prisoners my not only too. influenced their local Japanese communities, but also contributed towards nationwide intrigue and fascination from the imperial family. Mm -hmm. So, I know what you're thinking. How does this all link to anime? Yeah. During the 1910s, European cartoons more. were being introduced in Japan for the first time, which inspired oh, the first wow. Japanese Look animators. at this content. <laughs> While German cartoons wow. were shown back then, there were also French and British cartoons shown in Japan. So why did anime and manga develop an interest in German culture as opposed to other cultures? Well, That's the whole I mean, video! You can Tell find me. countless other cultural influences in anime, such as American culture, but that was likely influenced okay. by American involvement in Japan after World War II. So it's not exclusively German culture that's hinted at or referenced in anime. It's okay. a variety of cultures, but certainly German culture is one of the most prevalent ones in anime. I mean, when you think about it, like if you watch anime at all, if you have looked for anime at all and you try to find a new anime to watch, you will know that there is basically 
an anime about anything and everything. Anything and everything has an anime about it. Like any place, any time period, any situation, anything, it's all been done before. So of course they're going to eventually get to Germany and do German culture stuff because German culture is so widely known throughout the entire world because it's so unique. Of course there's going to be animes about it. If you're making animes about like a traveling salesman that, that sells used sneakers for cats you're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel you're gonna make it about anything because everything is being made already <laughs> like when it comes to anime it's actually insane with the german pow's in japan thousands of japanese became intrigued with german culture for the first time and as time passed the two countries became close allies by a mutual beliefs of militarism and ethno-nationalism and we all know where that led to in modern day anime. Japan, the presence of the German prisoners that lived in Japan over a hundred years ago has not been forgotten. Oh. The Bando camp was turned into a museum in 1972 oh, wow. and you can still visit it today. And a Japanese film to commemorate the German prisoners of Bando wow. camp was released in 2006 called Baruto no Gakuen, meaning Ode to Joy, Beethoven's most famous okay. piece. My theory is essentially that the impact of the German cultural exchange of this period continued to influence Japanese cultural interest for the coming decades. While there were anime released before and during World War II, anime only started to flourish into what we know today after World War II, especially in the 1950s and the one famous anime studio you may have heard of was formed. And before you comment, I know I said at the start of the video I wouldn't talk about World War II. This was just one but... sentence and that's it. So leave me alone. Thank you. Anyway, back <laughs> to the point. As anime was heavily inspired by the European cartoons of the 1910s, it was only natural that anime and manga would take on German culture as a theme for many, yeah. many shows. Of course. But that fascination with the culture blossomed out of the ashes of the First World War. And I admit, I have no factual way to prove this theory is true, as a theory like facts is just to me. a theory, and people die when they are killed. I have no concrete that maths sounds formula like a theory. to link this to anime and manga, and some of you might call me a lying clickbait bastard for doing that. But what yeah. is undeniable is the contribution of the German prisoners towards not just Japanese interest in German culture, I haven't but heard about this culture yet. as a whole. And if any Japanese media to come out of the early 20th century was influenced by foreign culture, it's those goddamn cartoons. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. What? What the frick is this? Is anime obsessed with N-words? What the frick? I think we have another video to watch. We're gonna have to watch that one another time. Anyways, wow. Um, <laughs> I like how he's like, I'm not going to mention World War II or anything about them being allies during World War II. And then his theory is like, okay, World War I happened and there were some POWs that had some influence. But then during World War II, they were close allies. And that's when they really started to like each other's cultures. And... <laughs> <laughs> and that he kind of went back on his original statement. But yeah, I think that like German culture is so unique that everybody all over the world knows the German culture, especially nowadays. So of course, people are going to want to tell stories around the culture. Like there are a lot of countries, like if you just look at European countries, Germany in comparison has a very recognizable culture from most of the other European countries. And probably part of that is because of the coverage that Germany has gotten over the years in Western media. But it is also warranted because Germany does have a very unique culture in a lot of ways. But I don't know. That's just what I think. What do you guys think though? I'll leave it to you guys, the experts. If you are an anime connoisseur, do you think that anime is obsessed with Germany and German culture? And if so, why? Let me know down in the comments below. At any rate, though, that's all the time that I have for today. Thank you guys so much for being here. And as always, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.